So you are all welcome to my YouTube channel for UTME students and uh, today we are going to look at chemistry starting with the periodic table. So what is periodic table? Periodic table is the arrangement of elements in order of increasing their atomic number. And of course, when we said periodic <laughs> So the key in defining periodic number of the element is atomic number. So it means that periodic number of the element based in the current definition according to Gautam Mayer, he defined periodic number as the arrangement of element in order of increasing their atomic number. So if you have an element and you want to place that element in the building table of the element. So the best thing that you need to look at is to look at the atomic number of the element. And of course, how do we identify the atomic number of an element? Generally, we have a general presentation of an element. For example, let's say we have X, and X is a symbol of is a symbol of our element. And of course, here we have A, and here we have Z. So this text represents symbol of the elements, which represent the symbol of the element, while the A here represents mass number, which represents the mass number of the element. And the Z here represents atomic atomic number of the elements. It represents atomic number of the elements. So this is mass number of elements, and this is atomic number of the elements. And of course, the x here will be then the element. So it means that if you see an element, like for example, let's say this is Na, and you have 23 here, and you have 11 here. So this 23 here means mass number. So it means that whenever you see an element, whenever you see an element, with something like this, it means that this 23 represents the mass number of the element. So if you see an element with the number at the top, it represents the mass number of the element. And what is mass number of the element? The mass number of the element is the sum, is the sum of protons and neutrons. And we use trunks in the atomic, in the atomic nucleus. So it means that the mass number, the mass number of the element is the sum of protons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus of the element. So it means that if you add the number of protons and neutrons of a particular element will get the mass number of the element. And of course, the 11 here represent atomic number of elements. It represent atomic number of the element. It represent atomic number of the elements. And of course, what is atomic number? What is atomic number of the element? So when you said atomic number of the element is the number of protons that are present in the nucleus of the atom. Is the number of protons in the nucleus of the the number of protons in the nucleus of the element. So the number of protons that are found in the nucleus of the element is what you call atomic number of the element. And where we have these protons, neutrons in an, in, in an atom. So we have atomic structure of the element, atomic, atomic structure of the element. What is the atomic structure of the element? First, an Atom, an atom is made up of a nucleus and a shell. An atom is made up of a nucleus and a shell. So this is 
nucleus and this is the shell so in the shell of an element we have what you call electrons so electrons are found on the shell they are found on the shell and they have negative charge so electrons they are found on the shells and they have negative charge and we have nucleus and inside this nucleus we have in the nucleus inside the nucleus of the atoms we have what you call uh, protons and protons is positive charge protons is positive charge and there is also neutron new from and the neutral is the neutron is neutral is neutral so it doesn't have charge so it's nil so now atomic number it means is the protons is the number of protons that are found in the nucleus of the atoms and then the mass number the mass number of the element is the sum is the sum of protons and neutrons so when you add protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atoms you have what you call mass numbers you mean that mass number mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons and this is how you represent the mass number of the element so it means that if you see the mass number of the element it gives you an idea that is the sum of the protons and the neutrons that are found in the nucleus of the atoms and that is what we call mass number so uh we are trying to define periodic table so a scientist called Lothar Mayer Lothar Mayer Lothar Lothar Mayer in the year in the year 1869 the five periodic table of the element as the arrangement of element in order of increasing their atomic number so he defined an element so he defined periodic table as the arrangement as the arrangement of in order of increasing their atomic number that is how he defined periodic travel so he defined periodic travel as the arrangement of element in order of increasing atomic number but there is also another scientist called Dimitri Mendeleev he is the first scientist that proposed the definition of periodic travel where he stated that uh, our elements are arranged in the periodic table in order of increasing their mass number so it's after some a lot of series of discoveries and this way we will find that there are so many elements or there are so many gaps in the periodic table there are so many gaps in the periodic table and that is why the definition of periodic table rendered imbalanced by Lothar Mayer because of so many gaps and of course the later Mayer was the producer of chemistry now came up with the definition of periodic table as the arrangement of element in order of increasing their atomic number. So now, so based on the definition of periodic table, atomic number and mass number, you can have an element and you may be asked to get the number of protons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus of that element. And how do we do it? Assuming now we have the element as we started with, let's say sodium, and the atomic number of sodium is 23 and the, sorry, the mass number of sodium is 11 and atomic number, sorry, the mass number of sodium is 23 and the atomic number is 11. So if you now look at this element, you will realize that the element sodium is neutral, it doesn't have any charge here, it doesn't have positive or negative charge. So it means that uh, Whenever an element is neutral, that is, it doesn't have any positive or negative charge. So generally, the number of protons 
and electrons are the same. It means that the number of positive charge, because we said protons is positive and electron is negative. So it means that if you see an element is neutral, it means that the number of protons and the neutrons are equal. So that is why now this is atomic number. An atomic number reflects the number of protons. So it means our protons here, since atomic number is 11, so it means that our protons is 11. So since our atomic number is 11, so our protons is also 11. And then electron, so electron. And since this element is neutral, it doesn't have positive or negative charge, it means that the electron number is 11. And then the mass number is 23. So how are we going to get the neutron? So the neutron is unknown. So we are going to apply the formula which says, according to the definition, mass number is equal to proton plus neutron. And the mass number of sodium here is 23. So we have proton is 11. M plus N. So we now take this to this side, we have two. We have 23 minus 11 is equal to N. So it means that our neutrons here, our neutrons is 12. So the neutrons number here is, is 12. So this is how we get the number of uh, neutrons. And then now if we have like sodium, where the atomic number is 11, 23, and here is positive. So what does that mean? It means that in this case, since sodium is plus, it means that it, it loses one electron. It loses one electron. So if proton is 11, so therefore since one electron is plus, it means that the number of electrons is reduced by one. So therefore the electron number here will be 10. So it will use one electron. And of course, the neutrons is going to be the same way. 23 minus 11 times this equals to 12. So what about the situation where we have chlorine? That is 7. Let's say chlorine that is 7 and we have negative charge here and we have 17 here. So the atomic number of chlorine is 12 and the mass number is 33. And here, the chlorine is negative. So what does that mean? It means that chlorine is having one extra electron. So it is protein, sorry, in proton is 17. And now we have negative charge here. It means that the number of electrons is increased by one. So the electron is now going to be 18. So whenever you see an element is having negative charge, so it means that the number of electrons is increased by the total number of the charge. Like for example, in the case of oxygen, where we have next to oxygen, we have two minus, and the mass number is 16, atomic number is eight. So how are we going to do it? So the protons is going to be eight, and the electrons, it means that oxygen has O increased with two extra electrons. So it means that the electron number here is going to be 10, because two electrons are added. So that is how to get the number of protons and neutrons in the atomic number of the element. So uh, that is this. So now the next thing that we are going to look at is the uh, so properties. No, okay, we are going to look at the periods and the groove of periodic turbulence. So we are going to look at the period and the groove of periodic turbulence. So we are now going to look at the group of the elements. So group is the vertical arrangement of the element. So the vertical arrangement of the element, that is two. And the uh, element in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. When you say the valence electron, it means that the total number of electrons that are found on the outermost shell. So if you see elements are in the same group, it means that they have the same number of valence electrons. Like for example, now let's look at this. Um, let's say we have sodium, and the atomic number of sodium is 11, and the mass number is 23. So now, if we are now going to look at the groove of this element, first we are going to draw our electronal composition, and the first shell have two electrons, and the second shell 
Apart from the fuel shell, all other electrons are accommodated in maximum of eight electrons. So here we have one, two, one, two. So we have eight here. And then the last one here, we have one. So in the first shell, we have two. In the second shell, we have eight. And in the last shell, we have one. So we have two, eight, one. And we have only one electron on the atomic cell. So one electron are found on the atomic cell. So it means that this is the valence electrons of sodium. Because as I said, when you said valence electrons, it means that are the total number of electrons that are found on the atomic cell. So elements, elements in the same group, elements in the same group, elements in the same group have the same number of shell. Have the same have the same number of shells. So it means that if you see an element in the same group, it means that uh, so the yeah element in the same group have the same number of have the same number of valence electrons. Have the same number of valence electrons. So now the valence electrons it means the number of electrons that are found on the shells. And of course, this is sodium, and the number of electrons on the atomic cell of sodium is one. So it means that sodium is in group one. You can also follow it on the other way using orbitals configuration. So we are going to follow the normal Auger principle. You know that remember we have one s, two s, two p, three s, three p, three d, four s. 4p, 4d, and 4d. So you can just leave it like this, like this. So according to our work for the sequence, according to our global principles, Said that our principle said that electrons are arranged from lower energy level to higher energy levels. So generally we have four atomic orbitals. We have four atomic orbitals. We have S orbitals and S orbitals accommodate a maximum of two electrons. And we have T orbitals which accommodate a maximum of six electrons. And this T orbitals is divided into three. We have Vx, we have Vy and we have pz so each of this accommodate a maximum of two electrons so two, this one also two and this one also two so if vx two py two pz two so they accommodate a maximum of two two electrons so if we now say two plus two plus two we are going to get six so p orbitals accommodate a maximum of six electrons and then we have d orbitals which accommodate a maximum of ten electrons and we have that orbitals which are powered a maximum of 14 electrons. So now, how are we going to arrange this according to the, how are we going to write the electronic configuration of this style and this symbol? So we are going to start with 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 4d, 4l. So this is how we follow the pattern. So we follow the pattern like this. So this is sodium, we are thinking about sodium, and the atomic number of sodium is 11. So we are going to start with 1s. So we have 1s2, because s accommodates the maximum of 10 electrons. So it means that now there are 9 electrons left. So after 1s, after this 1s, then the next thing is, as we can see, the next thing is 2s. So 1s2, we have 2s2, so we have 4. And then there are still some electron levels. So after 2s, then the next one is 2p. And we have 2p6. So we are now going to say 2 plus 2, 4 plus 6, we have 10. And so you don't have 11. So it means that after 2p, then the next one is 4s. Okay, so after 2p, the next one is 3s. So it means that here we have 3s1. So 2 plus 2, 4 plus 6, 10 plus 1, 11. 
So we have a level. So how are we now going to know the group of this element? We are now going to check the last energy level in, the, in this Fermat's concentration. So the last energy level is 3 here. So it's 3. And of course, the second to the last, sorry, the last energy level is 3. So since our last energy level is 3 and also second to the last energy level, they are not the same. So the energy level of the last orbital and second to the last orbital are not the same. So we are just only going to consider 3 S. So therefore now, we have 1 index, the index number of this orbital is 1. So that is why sodium is in borrow. One and also, if you follow using this, because there is one electron on the outermost shell, sodium is also in group one, so they are all in group one. one. So, the next thing after this is let's look at the chlorine. So, the atomic number of chlorine is 17, and of course, the mass number is 35.5. So you can still use the orbital's configuration and also shell. So let's use shells as orbital. So let's start with the shell. So in the first one we have one, two. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have two, eight, seven. So, we have two eight seven. It means that the balance electrons is seven. So, chlorine is in group seven. Is in group seven because we know we usually know the group of the element using the balance electron. So, chlorine is in group seven. So, let's use this map. This orbital's configuration. So, you have one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, and then three. 3p5 if you follow this pattern so you will see that it means that we have 2 plus 2 plus 6 10 plus 2 12 plus 5 17 so now the index number the last orbital is, is uh, so now we want to get the number and the chaos to reach this element belong or the group to which this element belong. So let's look at this the last energy level is P, sorry the last orbital is P and the energy level is 3. So now what we are going to do in this case we are going to look at the last orbital and second to the last orbital. So you see the last orbital is P and second to the last orbital is S but they have the same energy level which is 3 and 3 so they have the same energy level. So since they have the same energy level, so what we are going to do is we are going to take these two index number and sum them together. And that is where we have P plus 5, then we have 7. So that is why uh, chlorine is in group 7. So this is another way of finding the atomic, sorry, the, the, the group of an element using Calgary's configuration or using shell configuration. So now the next thing after this, after the group, we have periods. We have period. So what is a period? A period is the vertical arrangement of element. So when we have vertical arrangement of an element, so we have periods. Like for example, now let's see okay, period is the vertical arrangement of element. An element in the same period have the same number of shell elements in the same period have the same number of shells. So let's now look at this. Chlorine have how many shells? One, two, three. So it means that chlorine, as we said here, it is in group seven. So also at the same time, it is in period three because it has only one, two, three shells. So the number of shells indicates the period in which the group of the element belong. And of course, at the same time, we can use energy level to know the period element belong. So the energy level of P here is 3. So that is why it is colored is in period 3. And of course, for the sodium, the energy level is 3 and it's also in period 3. So from here, you can count 1, 2, 3 shell. So it is in period 3. 
So that is how you know the the the, 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 the uh, what you call um, the proof and the periods of the elements. And of course, in the periodic table, in the periodic table, in the standard periodic table, you have seven periods. You have seven periods. So in the periodic table, we have seven periods. And of course, the group, we have eight groups in the periodic table. We have eight groups in the periodic table. So we have seven periods in the periodic table, and we have eight groups in the periodic table. So now let's look at these groups of the element one after the other. So group one element, we have group one, so group one element is called alkali metal. It's called alkali metal. And we have group two. We have group two which is called alkaline arsenium. Alkaline, alkaline uh, metal. And we have this is group two. Then we have group three. So group three is called Warren family. It is Warren family. Boron family. Then we have group four. And group four is called carbon family. So group four is carbon family. Which is called carbon family. Then group five. So nitrogen, nitrogen family. Then we have group six, which is called oxygen family. Group six is called oxygen family. We have Group seven, and group seven, seven halogens that is called formas. Then we have lastly group eight, and group eight, and group eight is called, and group eight is called uh, enantiomers. So these are the eight groups of the periodic table. So, and then apart from this, we are going to look at uh, uh, some periodic properties of the elements, some periodic properties of the element. And this will be on the next video. This will be on the next video. So ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't subscribe to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. As in our next video, we are going to look at some questions from the first question papers of the CTMB and job to solve them. Thank you.